この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am back for more B Stars. We are on B Stars episode 7. The PAS subs came out yesterday in the evening, which means that I got to them today in the, the, the early afternoon.、Um, last week on B Stars, we had a Hell of an episode.、Uh, uh, went a lot of directions that I wasn't expecting, and a whole bunch of stuff went down in it.、Uh, so we met Juno, the big eyed pretty wolf, who I am going to guess is going to be a love interest for Lugosi, minus all of the、mm, inner turmoil caused with being in love with an herbivore, like a tiny cute herbivore rabbit girl.、Um, That sounds good. That sounds really great. And then we went on a mission for the drama club to, to do some paperwork y stuff and get some flyers and things, I guess. I, I don't actually remember it. it. It really didn't matter that much what they were there for. What mattered was what, what happened afterward. We saw the,、mm, let's call it the mask of society, this happy place where all the carnivores and herbivores can interact all. All happy and wonderful.、Uh, and then we went to the dark market and saw the reality of the underbelly of this society and what al- allows it to function relatively peacefully above the surface.、Um, had some pretty stellar horror direction and some just, just really impactful scenes. Check out these fingers and lack of fingers, yo.、Uh, just, just a few thousand yen, money, animal bucks. I don't know. I don't know what kind of currency they use. I, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter.、Um, then, Lugosi, in, in just full freak out mode, runs straight through the, the avenue of temptations and meat and smells and passes the fuck out on the floor,、uh, where he is picked up. In, in a horrifying scene that I thought was going to go an entirely different direction uh, uh, by a rather well experienced and pretty cool mentor character, Pandos, Panda uh, 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 vegetarian psychotherapist, who talks to him about some of the shit that he's going through and honestly seems to get what he's talking about and what he's dealing with in a way that even Lagoshi absolutely does not.、Um, So, forces him to confront, at least to some extent, the reality of what his feelings for Haru really are, and、uh, scares the absolute ever loving shit out of him. Hopefully, we see more of Panda Bro in the future because, because Legosi needs that stuff.、Uh, uh, a lot better of an influence on him than someone like Bill.、Um, and then we had a kind of wonderful scene at the very end where we met up once more with Aoba, the eagle character. And Legosi remarked on his beak being so shiny and clean.、Uh, thank you to people in the, in the comments who pointed out to me that, that what he was saying there is that Aoba's beak was not stained with blood, both like literally and in terms of just like being able to. to Stand back from his desires and hold himself, you know, self control.、Um, but also, that even if he had if he h a eaten d e of someone's flesh and cleaned his beak, a Lugosi probably would have been able to smell it. So he's, he's remarking that Alba is not lying to him. So that's pretty cool. I also kind of hope that we get some more, more Alba stuff and kind of become more chill with him because, again, better influence than someone like Bill. So. That's, that's where we're at. We're heading back to school.、Um, had some freaking out. I assume we're going to be going back to the drama club and doing some stuff, but honestly, got no real idea how this is going to play out over the next, the next episode and what's going to be adapted. And,、uh, I don't know.、Uh, I do have the very first frame of the episode up, so I can see that. And it has a title up on it, which is Below the Clothes and the Fur. So I assume that this is going to be an episode about introspection to some degree, like below what's on the outside. Right? Something like that. Maybe. Or maybe it's about meat. Who knows? It's Beastars. It can do whatever the fuck it wants. It's, it's been pretty great so far.、Um, so we're, we're heading home.、Uh, festival is coming up soon. Not sure when, but soon. And that's going to be a thing soon. Not sure when, but soon. So let's watch this episode. I have episode 7, PAS version of Beastars, up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find a picture in picture version with the video up there in the corner, linked down there in the description, and a timer based version up on YouTube. If you would like to sync up your own copy of the episode with the timer based version up on YouTube, that's what it's there for. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming at you shortly. And stick around on the YouTube version, which will have discussion on it. The picture in picture version on BitChute and Mega will not because it makes more sense for uploading. Um, yep, that's it. 
Beep Beep Timer. Okay, we're holding that for a while. Cool. Oceanese. <laughs> Sounds and bubbles. Legum. Fair. Egg in the name, yeah. The Ponderer. I'm already really intrigued by this character. We're getting inner inner monologue from a different character. Sure. Okay. What kind of a secret? Oh. Egg salad? He loves egg. That looks like a smile. Are they her eggs? <laughs> nice. Cool. Respectable. No, I have eggs to lay. Absolutely. A little bit haughty, though. Yeah. A little bit stuck up. But that's okay. Hey, it it shows in the eggs. <laughs> Alright, a little more than a little bit haughty. Cool. <laughs> what could it be? How is it possible? <laughs> Whole life crashing down. What? <laughs> you okay? Oh, Lego. What the fuck is this? Did he switch because of the of going to the market? Why did he switch? No, he said it was because of the the taste. So it's not her. That's the thing. <laughs> just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. Hmm. You're too proud to tell him, aren't you? This is a groovy track. With the whistle in there. Okay. What the fuck? That was amazing. I want more.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all see that? Oh boy. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, Jesus. That doesn't seem normal, bro. That's him. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. A little bit. But that's that's the value. Fake antlers. <laughs> Alright, this is like a million times more wholesome than I thought it was, and I'm so into it. Oh boy. All of the perfect. Can you hear it? It's my heart breaking. Yep. Mm hmm. Aww. Well, that's fucking bullshit. No. Uh huh. Putting himself in front of the door.
He's not. That's that is the one redeeming thing here. Oh fuck, you can smell it. Hey, why uh <laughs> Nothing. Oh, huh? This could all this could all be okay, ish. Nope, you're bound to be big. I think that might be a good thing. Yeah. How'd you know? Get used to it, ish. Oh, I thought that was going to go in a different way. The role of a dinosaur. Hmm. I really like her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm so into this. Yes. Sure, that would solve a lot of problems. And that is exactly what Louis wants. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi Jack, what's up?
<gasps> Why are you freaking out, Jack? <laughs> oh, he's got a stag beetle. Uh huh. <laughs> you didn't put him under the mattress, dude. Rookie mistake, Luke. I mean, he is a rookie. I get it. Ooh. Yep. Pretty much. Yep, that's 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 what a crush is. Ooh. Ha 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 ha! No 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 no! There's another way. Oh, bro. Who are you gonna run into? Hi, Haru! Yahoo! <laughs> ah! <laughs> nice, looking good. Going over to Haru. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ding! <laughs> yep, her scent. All over him. Oh, shit. War paint. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy, you just learned about this from Panda Bro and cut to ED. 
fuck. Back to this, are we? Oh, right, that thing. seconds. Okay. Well, this this episode reached a robber. Uh, blah 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 blah. This episode reached a robber levels of of heart attack induction. Is that the the proper form of inducing? Sure, whatever. Induction. Ah! Ah! Okay. There is there is such a massive like disparity between the various parts of this this episode. Uh, uh, the the incredibly cool and like fun thing with Legom the hen. Uh, uh, and her like, internal struggle about this wolf who sits next to her and particularly enjoys her egg salad sandwiches. And she, like, she is all wrapped up in that. I, I mean, just, we get how many minutes of characterization for Legom? We get, okay, it's like four and a half minutes total. I feel like I know everything I need to know about this character. I mean, honestly, I feel like I know everything I need to know about this character by about here, where she's talking about how it's not just any job, just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um fantastic. Just just fantastic. I love this section. It's great. And seeing things in this world from the perspective of other characters who exist within it is is interesting and I think important for fleshing it out and making it feel alive and like the school is and and this entire world is is real. I mean, it would be it doesn't it doesn't it, it, I, blah, 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 blah. it wouldn't detract much from the particular stories of the characters that we're most focused on if we didn't have these little side uh, asides toward other characters but it does add to the world and so i appreciate that does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense it, it maybe makes sense um okay then we have the op and then we have some of the most impressive animation I've seen in, in a long time. And, um, I don't know how it's being done. I, I just do not know how it's being done. It looks like it's pencil, uh, uh, colored pencil on paper and, or colored chalk and watercolor. I do not know if this is filters on CG stuff. It doesn't look like it. It looks like handwork. It's changing every frame. Every... Every twos. But it is ridiculously fluid. There is water stuff going on that is some of the most beautiful shit that I have ever seen. The The flow of the skirt is insane. They Those look like pencil lines or, or colored pencil lines or, or colored chalk lines. Melting, turning into water. And all of it is, is... Metaphor. And then that becomes the, the surface of the, of the water. Pan up, emerge from it. And then doesn't everything, yeah. Psh, these tree branches exploding into, into water and foam. 
and it's all it's all sexual metaphor, right? And then it it warps and twists into the face of Louis, and then we fade it, right? We cross fade it to to the CG. Yep. 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 That whole sequence. That is next fucking level. Who did this? Who did this? I need to know. And what other things have they worked on? I need to know. Wading through the water, bubbles underneath, flowing, and it's this. Okay, the first time we found out about, about Louis and Haru um, was the, the reaction that I had to it, and I think that was the intended reaction to it, was entirely driven by the context. It was shown to us at the very moment that, that Legoshi had like realized and talked with Jack about, oh shit, I'm actually really interested in this girl, and then we basically hard cut to girl fucking dude who Lo who Legoshi respects, right? Like, that was the context of it, which is, ah, inducing to the maximum. Or so I thought, until this episode, where we find out that, one, I'm actually really into the Louis and Haru relationship now, just, like, they nailed all of the bits that they needed to. One, it's really sweet. Two, it's star-crossed because he has to carry on his bloodline and is already engaged to a fiancé. I assume another red deer. Three, just like the way that their relationship came about, given the flashback that we get of it. Um, I'm curious about the antlers falling off thing. I'm curious whether whether we're supposed to infer that this is like more than just abnormal for his antlers to have fallen off. It, it it doesn't seem normal. It seems real bad. But I don't know. I don't know enough about deer to know if they if it's normal for them to bleed out of their fucking skulls when their antlers fall off. Deer, antler, shed, bleed. Huh. If an antler is knocked against a tree during the velvet stage, it will bleed. Okay, right? Doesn't say. Made up of true bone. Fuck shedding the, the velvet of their antlers is similar to menstruation. There was blood at the roots. Has any cycle? I'll look this up later. I, I I don't know. And I'm I'm if I if I search more particularly, I'm likely to end up with some kind of spoilers around whatever is going on here or any information that I don't want. Um, and if there are any deer or elk or moose experts out there can stress or living conditions or other things cause deer to shed their antlers early, cause young bucks to shed their antlers early in the year, and if they do, does that usually result in horrifying bloody messes? I don't know enough to know, so I'm not going to comment on it, but it seems pretty fucky, and he tries to just give her money so that she stays off of his back, and we are shown another element of their relationship, which I think is possibly the most important element of the relationship. Um, Louis is, is a school celebrity and he is, as we know, very wrapped up in his own, his own image and at like aiming for the top, but there's a, a flip side to that. And that is that you don't know if the people that you're interacting with are interacting with you because of you or because of your celebrity status, right? And he just sort of assumes that people know who he is, but it's impossible for Louis to have a genuine relationship with most people, or he thinks it is at least. And he, he's honestly probably pretty right. Everybody puts him on a pedestal. She doesn't, because she doesn't know who the fuck he is. She doesn't care. And so she's immediately attractive to him for that reason, because whatever they experience together is fucking real, right? That's a thing that happens in the real world and is legit, and that warms my heart and also kind of breaks it because it's pretty clear that despite this being a pretty legit relationship here uh it's not gonna work in the long term which fucking sucks and then <laughs> oh, 
And then Lagoshi's here. Hi! <laughs> so, we get a, a very classic posing myself in front of the door to prevent you from coming in, and he acts using his body as a block for the door throughout this scene as Haru just sort of clutches her head and sweats and kind of freaks out as she realizes that that these two dudes uh, know each other uh, like a lot, and that could be real bad. Oh boy. And then some things that Louis says and the fact that he can smell him make Lagoshi start catching on, but he doesn't want to think about it or believe it, so he's kind of just like, hmm, that's weird. I wonder why he smells like rabbit. Hmm, that's odd. He's a deer. Until eventually he, ding, figures it out. Uh, some cool stuff with light and shadow. Lego, uh, Louis moves out into the light before Lagoshi does, and when he turns back, Lagoshi's sort of hunched. Claws out in the shadow. Yikes. <laughs> okay, and then in almost the same breath in, in terms of pacing and the way that the episode is structured, we turn our attention to Lagoshi and this potential relationship with, with uh, Juno, one that doesn't have the, the issues, as I sort of mentioned at the very beginning of this video, doesn't have the issues of an herbivore carnivore relationship and all sorts of other bad things that could happen. Plus, she's actually really cute and, like, he's obviously kind of into her. We see the scene where he sort of pans down her body and is like, huh, I guess gray wolves aren't horrifying monsters all the time. She's actually kind of cute. It's there, but he can't see it, right? He's, he's, well, he's an, he's a blockhead anyway. Especially when it comes to girls, he's inexperienced and he's a blockhead, but he also can't see it because he's blinded by this tumultuous emotional experience that he's having with Haru, and he just can't see what's right in front of him, even though it's clearly right in front of him. Uh, yeah, looking at the claws, doing a pondering thing, and then ba-boom, hi, Juno, you're here too. So she's, she's lay, laying it on a little bit, right? She's like, hey, watch me dance. Maybe give me tips and stuff, even though you're not a dancer and I am. Yeah. And then he does this and we get this sort of like Casanova like oh, moment for, for her watching him. And it's kind of gorgeous. And we see the potential, right? The, the one that Legoshi does not see because he's blinded by a tiny rabbit. And uh, it's pretty well summed up in this particular moment where she's like, do you feel it too? This is, this is so wonderful. My heart is beating so fast, but I feel so calm inside. It, I feel comfortable with you and, and I, I want to hold on to this moment forever. And he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's like normal. When you, when you hug another creature of the same species for like 13 seconds, it, re it results in a whole bunch of endorphins and dopamine. It's, it's like a totally normal thing. You'll learn about it next year. Don't worry about it. Baaka! <laughs> eh, and then transition out. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so we then get Jack. <laughs> who now thinks that, that Legoshi has a rabbit fetish, which to be fair... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Jack. Oh no. We also find out that Lagoshi has a little, like, uh, stag beetle? Is that what they're called? Is that the right one? So it's, it's a horned beetle. A uh, stag beetle. No, stag beetles are the ones with the big ol', big ol' claws. Uh, beetle, big horn. Rhinoceros beetle. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're a whole bunch, and Hercules beetles and all things like that. It's also kind of interesting, maybe, that he, he has a horned creature that he takes care of, given the, the whole Louis thing. <laughs> it's a stretch. But that's kind of cool. He, he's taking care of a little insect creature. It also is kind of interesting. Like, insects are not sentient creatures in this world, so... Cool. I wonder where the dividing line is, because we have we have birds and I guess just warm blooded mammals, mostly. Do we have any reptiles? Have we seen reptiles? Yeah, we've seen a snake person, right? 
I actually don't remember if we've seen a snake person. I I actually do not know. I feel like it's only warm blooded uh uh mammals. And birds and things. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, Oxos, super awkward, to the festival, paint and stuff, run into Haru, worst possible thing to happen, except what happens a little bit later, which is Lagoshi's on top of the thing, and he sees that, and he sees that, and then he goes tick, 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 and we see the red encroaching on his eyes as he kind of goes into a rage, and, uh, uh-oh... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then we go back to this version of the ED. I'm not sure if it's changed from the other time that we heard the same sort of version of the ED with the same chorus. I'm not sure if there are any other elements that have changed, but this is the scary version where things are scary, and uh, that's bad. So. So. Uh. Got some great advice from Panda Bro last episode. Took it, looked at it, read it, crumpled it up, threw it out the window, got real mad. Shit. And because of the way that it's structured, now Lagoshi's the problem. We're not, we're, I'm not at least. I'm, I'm, the Haru Lagoshi ship, if you want to call it that, has sailed or sunk or whatever you want to consider. It's gone. There's, it's, no. Mm-mm. Nope. Nah. Nope. Haru and Louie, down for that. Lagoshi and Juno, down for that. Haru and Lagoshi, that's a dead rabbit. Yeah, that won't work. Won't work. Now, I could be totally wrong and we could get convinced otherwise in the next episode because this show is really good at pulling pulling my heartstrings and, and f fucking with me. All in all, a pretty fantastic episode. I love this bit with, with Legom the Hen. It is lovely. Uh, and just a, a cool look into another character's mindset and the way that they live their life in this world. I am absolutely mind blown by the, how many seconds of animation is this? From 606-ish to approximately 630. It's 30 seconds. It's a 30 second cut of some of the most interesting, intricate, detailed, seemingly entirely hand done, seemingly on paper don't quote me, it could be digital, it could be any number of things, it just looks that way. I mean, you can do crazy stuff with brushes. I mean, just, just the way that we pan here, away from that flower, and just the, the warping and changing of perspective, the amount of texture that's in all of this water, it really looks like real paper. I just don't know. I just don't know. You can see the construction lines. Like, you see this, this little line here? That's where they were shaping the head and didn't erase it completely. With digital, that would be on a different layer and you would just, you'd just not have that there. So I think it's all on paper and that's fucking amazing, especially, especially when, you know, people, people will say shit about a, a CG show like this, like, oh, it's, it's much easier this way or blah, 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 blah. And certain things in CG are much easier dynamic camera is like the main thing that that is one of the massive benefits of cg once you have your models created and rigged effectively especially the facial stuff you can do a whole bunch of stuff but all of that takes a massive amount of effort but for a cg animation to, to have a cut or sequence of cuts like this just in it just for just for general effect just just for an emotional experience and i mean it's 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 while she's having sex so there is sexual metaphor here big time as she explodes into water which is fucking mind blowing um that's that's like a and a, 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 i don't know i i don't have anything to relate it to if if I could relate it to anything, I would say there are certain cuts in uh, End of Ava that are reminiscent, but nowhere near the level of detail. Like the the whole empty empty void sequence. Not spoiling things about Ava because it's Ava, but like that whole sequence is 
kind of the same sort of a feel to it where it very it feels very much on paper and very like gritty and real and and odd and interesting but it's nowhere like it's not full frame insaneness like this was that was nuts that was like like uh i'm gonna assume that was one person animating it and i'm gonna assume it took them multiple months because i don't know how else you would do that that was nuts um and then the rest of the episode is is lovely and some super duper cuteness and i've completely turned my mind around on the major relationships of the series and oh boy we got we got problems we got we got problems now also juno is pretty sweet and i like her a lot she's she's pretty cool look she is fucked right now he needs to go talk to panda bro immediately like right now but he is also not thinking straight that is bad. That is a very bad. As we say in the business, that is very fucking bad. Okay, I think that's that's all my commentary for this episode of Beastars. So I'm gonna gonna wrap here and uh, 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 breathe. I guess I guess that's what normal people do is just breathe. Uh, yeah, gonna do that. So I've been Tiabu. This has been Beastars, episode seven, eight. What are we on now? Seven. Jesus, we're only seven episodes into this show, and already all these characters have so much life to them. Ah! Okay. Um, yeah. This is Beastars Episode 7. I've been Tiabu. I hope you liked it as much as I did, and I hope to catch you next week when we find out, um, whether everybody just, like, dies or something. I don't know. How do you continue from here? Ah! Uh, I don't know. See you there. Peace.